What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Now let's jump right on in and talk about the differences between the John Deere Z7 mowers and the John Deere Z9 zero turns. Now, the biggest difference between these two is going to be where they are classified at. So that is gonna be that the John Deere Z7s is still technically considered a residential mower, having a lot of commercial type features, whereas the John Deere Z9 is gonna be in that commercial mower lineup. Now, why these two get compared so often is because like I said, the Z7 has those commercial type features, but we'll go ahead and break these down into 10 specific differences between the two. So you know which one that you need to get your hands on. So starting at the frame, number one, first difference is going to be the frame. So on a John Deere Z7, what you're going to have is a tubular frame that runs from the front of the caster all the way back to the rear of the machine underneath the engine. And then over here on the John Deere Z9, you're going to have cast iron fronts here on your spindles that eventually runs in and is bolted into C-channel frame that runs its way down the length of the frame, but actually widens as it goes down the length of the chassis. Number two is going to be the difference in the mower decks on these two series of mowers. Both are going to be the forged John Deere deck, meaning that it's made out of one complete piece of steel where there are no cuts and welds, but there are some differences. On the Z7, you're gonna have nine gauge steel and you're going to have cutting widths between 48 all the way up to 60. Now, whenever we move over to the Z9, now we're jumping into the John Deere exclusive seven iron deck. This is going to be one single piece, again, of forged seven gauge steel making that deck without any cuts or welds on the inside. But here we are going to have the option from 48 up to 72 and also have the option of getting either a rear discharge or also a John Deere exclusive mulch on demand deck. Number three is going to be engine options. So on the Z7, you're going to have the option of either a Kawasaki or a Briggs and Stratton engine. Now, when we move to the Z9, as of right now in 2023, your only option is going to be Kawasaki in the gas model. Now, they are working on some other options here, hoping to get a second engine option in on the Z9s. But as of right now in 2023, Kawasaki is going to be it. But you do also have the diesel option whenever you move up to the Z9. Now, the fourth thing corresponding right along with those engines is going to be horsepower. So over on the Z7, we're going to have horsepower ranges from 23 horsepower up to 27. Then once we move to the Z9s, you're going to have a horsepower range in the gas model of 23 and a half up to 35. And once we move to the diesel model, you're going to have either a 25 horsepower or a 37 horsepower. Now, moving right along to our fifth difference, let's talk about transaxles. Now on the Z7s, what you're going to have is the Hydro Gear ZT3100s all the way up to the Hydro Gear ZT3400s. Now the 3100 is going to start on your lower model and then the 3400 is going to be in your higher model in the Z7 range. And what this is going to do is bump up that speed up to 10 mile an hour. Now, this is also gonna be a big differ differentiating factor whenever we're talking about whether these machines are residential or commercial, because the ZT3100s, those hydro gear transmissions are a great, great transaxle, but they are going to be more in the residential lineup. Whereas once we move to the Z9, now you're moving to the tough torque, heavy duty transaxles that are going to be a true commercial grade transmission for these mowers. With that, you're going to get speeds of up to 12 mile per hour. You're also gonna get the option of once you move into a Z9R trim level machine, you will have those cross porting transaxles. Now what this means is, this is gonna be a system that is going to move the hotter oil from one transaxle to the cooler transaxle to make sure and help and regulate those temperatures. This is gonna help with wear on the machine. This is also going to help with runtime and uptime. So say you are working on a hillside and you're really working this right-hand side, once that oil gets really hot in that transaxle, it will start to release and cross port over to the cooler one to help regulate that temperature. Number six is gonna be fuel capacity. So when we're in the Z7 lineup, we are looking at eight gallons of fuel capacity on these mowers. And then once we move over to the Z9, now we're looking at a 12 gallon tank. And then also don't forget that you can get either gas or diesel, but whether it be the gas or the diesel, you're going to have that 12 gallons of capacity on either machine. Now, number seven is going to be talking about the parking brakes. 
Now on the Z7, what you're going to have is going to be an integrated parking brake. So that means that there is no lever, there's no foot control that's going to disengage that parking brake. Whenever we pull these levers in, you're actually gonna hear a click and that is going to be what disengages your parking brake. Once we put them out, you'll hear that click again and that's going to engage the parking brake. Once we move over to the Z9, we're gonna have one of two options. The first one being a hand lever like this one here that's going to be a manual lift there. So we have to push that button and drop it to disengage or pull up on it to engage the parking brake. And then once we move into the Z9Rs, we have a kick style foot brake, which is gonna be over on the left side of your foot platform, where we simply have to kick that to either take it off or push it in to engage the brake. Number eight is going to be deck lift. Now I'm here on the Z9 because on the Z9, you will have an option for the way that you do your deck lift, depending on what trim of mower you get in. Over on the Z7, it is going to be a manual foot lift. So you're gonna have to push on the foot lift there, turn your knob to be able to select that height of cut, and then unlock the mower by pulling up on that latch. Once we move over to the Z9, we're gonna have a similar system on our E and M trim level mowers. Then once we move to the R, we're actually gonna have controls here in the handle. So what we're gonna have is a black button and a yellow button. The black button is going to raise the deck up, allow us to change our height of cut, unlock that deck, release the button, then lower that deck down. And then whenever we need to raise it back up, we're gonna hit that black button again to raise that deck back up. Then we're also gonna have this yellow button over here that is going to stop our PTO if we need to. Now, both mowers to be able to engage the PTO are both gonna be on a push button switch, but the Z9R is going to have that option. If you need to quickly stop that mower deck, you will have that here at the touch of your thumbs as well. Now, our last two, starting with number nine, warranty. Now, this is going to be a huge one if you are a commercial mowing customer. This could also be big if you're a residential as well. So let's break down the differences there. On the Z7, you're gonna have a standard four-year option on all Z7. So all Z7s will have that four-year. But the difference here is that you're going to have a difference in the amount of hours that come on the different trim levels. So the way these warrant warranties work is for instance here on this Z720E, you're gonna have a four year 500 hour warranty and that is whichever comes first. So if we hit that four year mark before we hit the 500 hours then that is where the warranty stops. If we happen to hit the 500 hours before we hit the four years, then the warranty stops there. Now, once we move up to an M trim level in the Z7, this goes to a four year 750. And then once we move up to the R trim level, this moves up to a four year, 1000 hour. When we move over to the Z9s, the warranty gets a little bit different. There's a little bit few, there's a few more quirks here, but this is meant to help out with the commercial customer. So on the Z9s, you are gonna have a 36 month, 1200 hour warranty on the E's and M's. Once you move to an R, you're gonna have a 36 month, 1500 hours. This again is whichever comes first in the sense like we talked about on the Z7. Now, the one difference here is though, is that you do have an unlimited amount of hours in the first 24 months. So if you're that commercial guy that's mowing all day long, 12 months out of the year, seven days a week, and you're putting a ton of hours on this machine, you know that you are for sure covered for 24 months at least. If you don't meet that 24 month criteria, then you are still going to have that 36 month in either 1200 hour or 1500 hour, depending on which machine you buy. Now, number 10, probably the most important one, this is the one of the biggest factors when we're deciding on what type of machine we wanna buy is going to be price. Now, there is gonna be a significant jump between the sevens to the nines, so don't let this sticker value shock you. What I'm going to give you is suggested list price. And like I tell everybody, when you're going in and looking at one of these machines, make sure and go into your local dealer, ask for any of the discounts that are available, any incentives, any sales programs that are going on so you can make sure to get the right price. So starting in the Z720E, the lowest model in the Z7s, these are gonna start around the $8,800 mark. Once we move up into the Z9s, right now with only having the Z920M as your lowest model, you're gonna be around the $15,000 mark. So I know that that's a huge jump, but after you've seen the differences here, 
seen all of the upgrades that you get when going to the Z9. If you're that commercial guy, or maybe you just have that cash flow and this is the mower that you want for longevity, just know that that is what you're gonna be looking at sticker wise on this mower. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, we just asked you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you need any John Deere parts at all, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.